In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add physics joints to a 2D animation rig. The example I'm going to use is a simple rope to which we add hinge and character joints. The joints will be added automatically with a simple script, so you can easily reuse it. Let's get started. I am starting with a new Unity project for which I chose the 2D template. The only sprite we need here is a rope sprite, so I drag that in. I'm using the PSB file format, so I can use the PSB importer, which is already installed when you choose the 2D template. In case you actually want to use the same sprite, feel free to download it from the link in the description. It is just a sketch though and there is some color bleed. Now we go into the sprite editor, choose the skinning editor and start creating some bones. Double click the sprite and click create bone. The more you choose, the more fluid the rope is going to look. Since the script to add the physics will be automatic, it won't be more work for you, but more work for the CPU. When you're done, click Auto Geometry to create a mesh. You can choose how much detail you want, which means less weird looking sprite deformations, but that too comes at higher performance cost. You can also come back and change that later. When everything is done, click Apply and bring the sprite into the scene. As you can see, every bone is the child object of the previous bone. Unfortunately, there is no pre-made function to get all the nested childs, so we will use a recursive function, meaning a function that triggers itself. So let's make a new script, call it Joint Creator and open it up. I am using a list here to store all the bones, simply as game objects. The main function is going to be create joints and I added a context menu attribute so we can call the function easily in the inspector even when the game isn't running. The function to get the bones is quite simple. It asks for a transform as a parameter from which it gets the game object and adds it to the list. Then it checks if that transform is a child and if so it triggers itself again. I'm using transform here because for each transform child is a pre-made method that goes through every child. When the function arrives at the last bone, there is no more child, so it won't trigger anymore and the loop ends. When calling it for the first time, we are passing in the transform this script sits on as the parameter. That means the script needs to be attached to the root bone. So let's try it out. When I right click the script, I can call the create joints function and the list is now filled with all the bones. You probably want to add another empty game object, which doesn't have a bone, but will get a joint too and serve as an invisible weight, because otherwise the end of the rope is going to look a bit stiff. Now it's time to make joints. Let's just loop through the list and add a component to it. First I'm going to use Hinge Joints 2D, as they are quite popular among joint creators, but to get a more ropey feel, character joints work better. I'm doing that right after, so you can see how easy it is to use different joints. When you add a hinge joint 2D component to a game object, rigid body 2D is added automatically, so we don't have to do that. Ok, let's try that out. Go into play mode, right click the script and click create joints. As you can see, every bone now has a joint attached to it. The reason why nothing happens is because they aren't connected. This field right here, the connected rigid body, is empty. We need to assign each previous one like so, but of course this should be done in the script. So back in our loop, every time we create a joint, we save a reference to the rigid body and use that in the next iteration of the loop. In the first iteration, the rigid body is null and that's fine because the first joint doesn't need a connected rigid body. So we can use that and only assign the rigid body if it isn't null. And here's the rope. Not much happening to be honest, and dragging about joints won't do us much good. So let's write a quick test script to add force to the rigid bodies. Having different joints in mind, we can write it so that it works for 2D as well as normal rigid bodies. This one's pretty simple. We have a vector 2 which we use to store how much force we want to apply, and a function called apply force. This one is going to try to get a normal rigid body. If that worked, it's going to apply the force there. Otherwise, it's trying to get it rigid body 2D. Once again, we add a context menu to call the function from the editor. 
and we can also call it with hitting space in case we want to check out what happens when you apply forces to different joints at the same time. Now let's add some force and as you can see it looks quite nice. You can play around with different masses, forces and so on. But as I mentioned before, character joints look more ropey, so let's change the script to use those. To choose which joints we want to add, I'm going to use an enum and a switch statement. That way it's easier to switch joints back and forth. The enum is going to be called joint type and there are hinge joint and character joints. This is of course where you can add all kinds of joints. Getting the bones will be the same of course, but then use the switch statement to choose a different loop. I just copy and paste the loop and replace widget body 2D with widget body and hinge joint 2D with character joint. You could write this in a single loop and switch on types, but then you'd have to use objects and casting or dynamic variables. And this is going outside the scope of this tutorial. If anyone is interested, leave a comment and I can show you the more advanced version. Okay, let's try that out once again, this time with the character joints and add force. The character joints can of course be configured in many ways, as well as the rigid body. Depending on what you're using this method for, you just have to do some experimenting to see what works best. This is it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something. In future videos, I will explore ways to combine physics and recorded animations. If you already want to go ahead, an important tip I have is to disable the is simulated checkbox of your widget bodies when playing recorded animations. Otherwise you get really weird results. Same goes for combining physics with inverse kinematics. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and seriously consider subscribing. Goodbye.